Hi, I'm Jeff again. If you uh, saw our first video, you were invited to come out to our lab with us, so I'd like to give you a quick tour of our lab. It's not very tidy because we're, uh, we're working quite a bit out here, but here are some of our tools. Got an oscilloscope, 3D printer, using that for our Bedini energizers. With our Bedini energizers, we're actually able to take batteries. Here's an example of a battery that has been reconditioned. So this battery, once upon a time, was in a motorcycle. It no longer started the motorcycle. By being able to hook it up to the Bedini Energizer and then spin it, it's using high sp spikes of high voltage electricity to knock the, an knock the sulfates off the anode and cathodes of these batteries and it brings them back to a fully restored condition, which is pretty exciting. Uh, to not have to toss these batteries into a landfill or have to melt them down and reconstruct them. So this has been done uh, for a number of years and this is part of uh, what we're doing uh, to help the environment is to not uh, to be able to reuse our batteries which is pretty cool. And it isn't just car batteries or motorcycle batteries, this is really something that uh, all batteries can be reconditioned. Alright, moving right along, let's go back over this way One of our other projects is the what we call uh, our EV 1.2. So this is a full-size, full-scale, all-electric off-road race car. It's in uh, a state of conversion right now. As uh, Henry's showing you the front of the vehicle, you can take a look at, we're doing a motor swap. So. When Henry makes his way back over here, I'll talk a little bit about the, the changes that we're making. So in the, in the far back part, you can see these two motors on top of each other. Those are direct current motors. That was EV1. We were using direct current air-cooled motors, and we couldn't keep them cool enough. So then when we, we went to EV1.1, which is this motor here, made by Northrop Grumman. It's an AC motor and it was liquid cooled. You can see the two boxes on the top of it. Uh, after uh, about six months of investigation and exploration and programming with our controller, we realized that it really did need this original giant computer controller. It takes a bridged controller, meaning two controllers to operate it. So we've scrapped this system. We built this bench motor. So this is actually a, a motor that our programmer could use. It's like it's fully operational because it's got a cooling system on it both for the controller and for the motor itself and it's self-contained. So we learned a lot by doing that but what we're uh, what we've just put in this this week is a permanent magnet motor and so now we have again it's an AC permanent magnet liquid cooled all-electric motor that's being driven by this controller, so think of this as the, the computer that will send the right amount of current down to this motor that then converts that power through the transaxle in and out to the rear wheels. Uh, there are two battery packs that power this vehicle. One is right over here with this yellow strap on it that has 42 kilowatts of energy in it. And uh, there's another battery pack that sits behind the driver's seat and this whole pack slides out the other side in the event we wanted to swap it out. That battery that's on the floor behind Henry gets hoisted up and dropped right down in this compartment here. So when the car is fully loaded and ready to go racing, uh, it has 84 kilowatts of power in it. That's what the Tesla Model S has in it. And we hope to get somewhere around 125 miles of range out of that and uh, being able to go along at race speed. So Henry, if you come back over here and you zoom up on that picture on the wall, you can let folks see what the car looks like when it has all its clothes on it or its body panels or its skin. So right now it's all stripped down to a uh, tube chassis and all of its bare parts so we can work on it. Okay, let's uh, shift topic. So now we're going to talk about the quantum energy generator and we're, uh, we're new in its development. So this is a core. There's a rotor that would sit inside of here and spin. And all of this gets mounted on this platform over here. 
and it's drawing radiant abundant energy through that coil there and it's converting that into usable energy. And I don't really want to speculate what we expect this to do because that's where everybody turns this off and says, oh, that's not possible. So all I'm going to say is stay tuned. Perhaps uh, November, December, we'll be able to show those light bulbs coming on and working and uh, make believers out of people who have a hard time believing in things that right now our brains just don't allow us to say that can be done. Okay, so we've talked about the quantum energy generator, we've talked about the Bedini Energizer, we have talked about the uh, all-electric off-road race vehicle. Let's go outside and take a look at the aquaponics system. So the aquaponics system is powered by solar panels, both uh, here as well as uh, the, the ones up above here. And we're still in the process of determining how many batteries we need. All the batteries are down inside of here. The batteries are used to collect solar power by day because when the sun goes down, there's no power to operate these systems. So that's when the battery power comes in. And you can see that there are live tilapia fish in the water down there. And the excrement from the fish provides the nutrients for the plants. And the water is cycled up to the top and then it drains down back into the tanks below and then it's gravity balanced out between the two tanks. So uh, the thing that's really exciting to me about this is we've got, you can see ripe tomatoes in the back, you got okra that's ready to harvest, lettuce that's ready to eat, you've got peppers that are ready to harvest, again kale, uh, we had eggplants earlier so these plants go really quickly this way and what I mean by really quickly you know, I have a regular garden at the house. These plants were easily uh, to maturity, from babies to maturity in half the time. This system uses one-tenth of the water that regular gardening does. That's because it gets, the same water gets used over and over again. When you turn your sprinklers on at the house, hey, you get to use that water one time. It goes in the dirt, you never see it again. All you do is get to pay for it. This water is used over and over and over and over again. And the only loss is what evaporates and that's where our atmospheric water generator comes in. We don't have that here. It'll be here in October. Uh, it's about the size of a device that you would put a five gallon uh, water jug on top of. So you could imagine, you know, a device about like so and about this tall. And that device will make six to eight gallons of water a day for 500 watts per hour, which would be more than enough to keep this system uh, hydrated. So there you have it. Those are the primary projects that we're working on right now. Uh, the one that I can't really show you, um, although we are making videos of the training that we're doing, is uh, we have a healers group and we are actively training energy healers right now uh, to step into that, that art and that science of going about achieving wellness uh, in, in a healthy, sustainable, green, renewable, fun way. It's all really about having fun and living well. So thanks for watching the video.